What happens when the happy-go-lucky family down the road ends up entangled in a twisted murder case that would send shockwaves through a small town community? Can the person you would least expect to commit such a heinous crime truly turn evil overnight? This is the case of a talented young girl whose fate would transform after one dire decision. This is the case of Phoenix Racing Cloud Tehran. My name is Zach and you are watching Crime Origin. Phoenix Racing Cloud Tehran, better known as Racy by her peers, was a sweet, nature-loving young girl that grew up in South Africa's capital city of Cape Town with her mother Rosemary and her two younger siblings, Shariel and Tuggy. Phoenix and her family were known for their rather eccentric lifestyle, moving often, living out of various vehicles, and traveling around the country in a horse-drawn cart. Her mother was often described as a hippie and was a well-known performance artist at local festivals, with her main acts involving clown costumes, colorful makeup, and walking on stilts. Rosemary's friends described her as flamboyant and brave and held her in high regard. However, there was more to the Tehran household than what met the eye. Despite the outward appearance of a carefree, fun-loving lifestyle, in reality, the children's needs were not always met to the same standard as general society a problem that Rosemary did not seem to find anything wrong with as her view of public schooling was significantly biased. Both children were homeschooled for most of their childhood, but both continued to fall behind as Rosemary neglected to keep up with their schooling. As kind and loving as Rosemary was towards her children, she did not always consider them when it came to her lifestyle choices, and she would often leave Phoenix at home alone to care for her infant siblings from a very young age. She would leave home to work as an entertainer for the local trance scene, or to work night shifts at a bar and would neglect to ensure her children's safety. She would then take psychedelic drugs and smoke cannabis around her kids and meditate for hours, leaving Phoenix to go hungry. On two separate occasions in Phoenix's early childhood, men within the family circle sexually harassed her, one of which was her grandmother's boyfriend. Then, on another occasion, Rosemary married a man who ended up being physically abusive, abuse that Phoenix would witness over and over again until police were forced to intervene. Rosemary's rampant lifestyle was too erratic to nurture a healthy relationship with her children. However, from the outside looking in, they seemed nothing short of content, often attending events and farmer's markets together, only to be described as positively run-of-the-mill along with the rest of the highly populated hippie community that lived across the coastal region of South Africa. At age 12, Phoenix was sent by her mother to a small town called Nysna, along the garden route of South Africa, to live with her father for the first time since she was a young girl. Although her father supported her schooling much more than Rosemary did, he was no better of a parent. When Phoenix was young, the two stayed in a makeshift home at an abandoned building site where he often threw parties, exposing his daughter to crowds of rowdy drunk men. After a few years of building up her education at home by herself, at age 16, she managed to finally convince her parents to send her for formal education at the local public high school and attend grade 10. Phoenix seemed to take everything in her stride. However, there was one thing that she never seemed to get away from, her bizarre name. A group of teenagers at her school took it upon themselves to bully Phoenix for her name and call her a weirdo. She tried not to let it upset her, but her name had been a soft spot for her since a young age, even causing her to introduce herself to strangers using different, more regular names like Jessica. The bullying hurt her so deeply, causing her to lean into a shyness that formed part of her identity. Although she still managed to make some good friends along the way with her sweet, fun-loving nature and kindness. Despite the gaps in her early education, Phoenix was intelligent and started expressing herself through songwriting and singing, two things she developed an impressive talent for. However, her lyrics and song titles like I Can't Do This Anymore and Lost Uncertainties revealed that Phoenix held a lot of deep, unfiltered emotions within her. As Phoenix Racing Cloud grew older, she began drinking with her peers and experimenting with drugs, two things she saw no problem with as her mother had often enjoyed psychedelics and alcohol in her presence. 
She then started attending trance parties with her mother, doing drugs and drinking with her as well. In 2011, Phoenix met a young man by the name of Kyle Maspero and fell deeply in love with him as they began to date. However, what seemed like the start of her happy ending was only the beginning of an unspeakable tragedy. Kyle was part of the more rebellious crowd in the small town of Nysna and was known for his reckless behavior. He was a confident young man with a troubling past that Phoenix overlooked. Kyle's mother had died when he was only five years old, leaving him to his father who could not take responsibility for him. He was passed around to various family members until he eventually ended up in a foster home. Unfortunately, by the time Kyle reached his first foster home, he was already so unhappy with the feeling of being abandoned and unwanted by his own family that he started using crystal meth. After being expelled from two separate high schools and rejected from two foster homes, Kyle enrolled in a rehab facility and successfully became sober. This allowed him to find his third foster family with a successful author who lived in Nysna. While Kyle lived with his new foster family, they showed him a lot of love and taught him many artistic skills, including photography, something he became quite good at. He also became very passionate about capoeira. With the support of his new foster family, Kyle managed to get into another high school on the basis that he stayed sober. When he went to a leadership camp run by the school where he met Phoenix, after which an unforeseen nightmare would begin to unfold. In 2013, once Phoenix finished her final year of high school, she and Kyle, who was only 17 at the time, moved to Cape Town together after discovering that she had fallen pregnant. The couple decided to stay with Rosemary, who was now living in a place called Cloverly. When Phoenix arrived, she was disturbed to hear that Rosemary had sent her younger brother, Tucky, to live with his father in South America, a man he had never met since she had accidentally fallen pregnant while she was traveling in the country. However, her sister, Charielle, was still there. The house was in a messy state, and Phoenix was upset to hear that her little sister, who was only eight years old at the time, was not attending school. Not long after this, Phoenix decided to terminate the pregnancy. After recovering, things only began to get more rocky between her and Rosemary, as Phoenix felt further disappointed in the state she found her mother and sister in. The mother and daughter fought often, with Kyle getting caught up in the mix, until one day in early March 2013, Phoenix reported her mother missing to the local authorities. She said that she had last seen her mother a few days prior at 9 p.m. on the 7th of March, getting into a white Mercedes Benz with a man she did not know. Most who had heard the news and seen the missing posters shared on social media did not think too much of Rosemary's disappearance yet, as she was known for suddenly leaving on spontaneous road trips for most of her life. While Rosemary's friends and family banded together to search for her, Phoenix and Kyle took responsibility for Shariel and started a support group for themselves on Facebook. The community felt much sympathy for Rosemary's two daughters, with many thinking that it was so selfish and typical of her to leave them behind, while others speculated that Rosemary had been abducted. Either way, donations streamed in to help the three support themselves with rent and food. Along with Kyle's small income from working at a surf shop, this money went far for the three who were able to start fresh in a new town called Gordon's Bay and even afford to enroll Shariel in school. It was the happiest Phoenix and Kyle had been in a long time, which evoked Phoenix to leave a message on the Facebook support page for her mom, saying, we talk about you every day and pray for you wherever you are. Don't worry about us, we are happy and strong. At this point, Rosemary had been gone for some months and her friends began to fear for the worst, if not know deep down that Rosemary was not coming back. They continued to put up posters for the missing free spirit and held vigils for her to keep the search alive. Then one day on the 26th of September, the truth would come out and change Phoenix's life forever. Unfortunately, the suspicions about Rosemary suddenly rang true when police found Rosemary's body buried in a shallow grave near the Strandfontaine Pavilion in Cloverly, not far from where she was staying before she disappeared. As the news spread amongst her closest friends and relatives, hypothetical stories of what happened filled the conversations surrounding what led to her untimely death, from rape 
a drug overdose, all the possible causes for Rosemary's demise came to mind, with many fitting the norms of violent crimes for women traveling alone in South Africa. Panic and speculation filled the air, until a twist came that was so vile it had family and friends reeling in the tragedy. Later that day, on the 26th of September, 2013, the young, sweet Phoenix Racing Cloud and her boyfriend Kyle Maspero were brought in on account of murder. On the 7th of March, the day Rosemary had disappeared, Phoenix was having an argument with her mother about her little sister's lack of schooling. Phoenix pleaded with her mother to let her sister go to school so that she could experience a good education, to which Rosemary laughed and replied that Sherrielle would just run away like she did before. Phoenix was scarred by her mother as a child in regards to school. With Rosemary telling her horror stories about violent teachers and wayward students to put her off wanting to go. However, Shariel had expressed the desire to go, and Phoenix wanted to protect her sister from growing up with the same neglect that she did. But with the conversation between Phoenix and her mother escalating, Rosemary decided to go to her room and sleep instead of continuing the argument. At this point, Kyle and Phoenix headed outside to smoke a joint and discuss how under her mother's care, her little sister would become a prostitute by the age of 16. However, instead of choosing to stay and try to work things out with Rosemary, they hatched a much more menacing plan to get rid of Rosemary altogether. After some time, Rosemary went out for an evening shift and left Phoenix, Kyle, and Shariel at home. While she was gone, Kyle hit a pipe of crystal meth and Phoenix continued to smoke marijuana. Upon returning home later that night, Phoenix greeted her outside with a sincere smile and apology for their fight. She embraced her mom in a hug and pointed to a star in the sky. Rosemary, feeling relieved about the apology, lowered her guard and looked up at the star. But before she could look away, she felt the tightening grip of a rough piece of rope cutting off her ability to breathe. Behind her stood Kyle, strangling Rosemary with a piece of rope he had taken off a pot plant. Although he had intent to kill Rosemary, Kyle could not bear to look at what he was doing and panicked, letting the rope slip. Phoenix then urged him to hold the rope tighter and count to four minutes with her until Rosemary stopped fighting and her body became very still. To the horror of Kyle, Rosemary's body let out a final deep sigh when he released the rope, after which Phoenix reassured him it was normal after death by strangulation. It was in this house that Kyle Maspero allegedly strangled Rosemary Tehran with the help of her own daughter, Phoenix, but it's up to the courts to get to the bottom of what actually happened that terrible night. Barbara Friedman, Cape Town. After her mother was officially dead, Phoenix urged Kyle to bury the body straight away, but Kyle could not get himself to do it. However, after two days of keeping the body wrapped in a pink blanket and hidden under a tarp in the backyard, Kyle mustered up the courage to face his actions and buried Rosemary in a shallow grave in the wetlands near their house in Clovelly. And this is where the body would stay until a paranoid Kyle later involved his new friend, 20-year-old Godfrey Sheepers, in the removal and reburial of Rosemary's body to the place where police discovered it soon after. Once Sheepers was dragged into this horrific murder, his conscience would not let him get away with it, and he confessed to police on the 26th of September, 2013, leading them to the new location of the body and sharing any and all details he could remember about what Kyle had told him. Sheepers was held for questioning only to be released on bail on the 1st of October, facing no charges for his involvement. Phoenix and Kyle would not be let off so easily. In their first court appearance together, the two were seen holding onto each other and giggling throughout the trial, which left a very bad taste in the mouths of friends and family who had been rooting for them before Rosemary was found. However, once the reality set in that the truth was out and their lives would be effectively over, the couple split up and were tried separately in May 2014. On the 2nd of May 2014, in the Cape High Court, Phoenix Racing Cloud Tehran, who was still only 19, pleaded guilty to murdering her mother on the 7th of March 2013. She was sentenced to 20 years imprisonment, with five years suspended. During her plea, she shared a lifelong account of neglect and abuse that she had suffered at the hands of her mother, and she stated that it was in fact her boyfriend, Kyle Maspero, who had initiated the idea of the murder. 
Kyle, on the other hand, who was only 17 at the time of the murder, stood trial as an adult, only to be released for bail on account of pleading that he was suffering from psychiatric problems at the time. However, on the 17th of December, 2015, after a month of evaluation at the Valkenburg Psychiatric Hospital in Cape Town, he was deemed fit to stand trial and received a sentence of 13 years in the Polesmore prison in South Africa. According to Phoenix, despite the alleged drug use that plagued the young couple's relationship, with meth playing a huge part in the volatile behavior of Kyle, she was fully aware of what she was doing and knowingly acted unlawfully when she assisted Kyle in murdering her mother. Despite the gruesome outcome of Phoenix Racing Cloud's story, bullies and strangers alike continued to plague her social media, ridiculing her for her quote-unquote stupid name. This begs the question, was there a killer hiding behind Phoenix's sweet exterior all along? Or were the events that ensued ultimately a result of a cruel reality for a sensitive young girl in the wrong circumstances? If you found this story compelling, don't forget to like the video, comment your take down below, and subscribe to the channel. Also, hit that notification bell in order to stay up to date each time we reveal a new shocking case.